Garth Hill College in Berkshire. A seemingly ordinary school day. But as the children play unsuspectingly, a deadly invisible killer stalks the school's corridors. And by the time this year nine biology lesson is over, more than two thirds of the pupils will have fallen victim to this unseen menace. Its name, Aviflu. But fear not, Aviflu is a harmless classroom activity dreamt up by Nigel Heslop, commissioning editor of Science Update. I suppose I could be accused of using a gimmick to um, teach a, a contemporary science issue, but I think it's really quite important to try and hook the children in and get them really interested fairly quickly so that you haven't got to use all sorts of other tricks and skills to get them actually on task and, and doing the, the job you want them to do. We're going to use a fluorescent dye as the virus. Because most schools don't have a deadly virus to hand, the AVI flu activity centres around simulating transmission of a virus within the classroom using a harmless invisible dye. What I'm doing is putting just a little dusting of the ultraviolet marking spray. The dye is sprayed onto resources the pupils will use as part of the lesson and is transferred to their hands, mimicking the way a virus can spread. A UV light is then used to reveal who has been infected. To carry out the activity successfully, the following items are required. The UV fluorescent dye, a handheld UV light, updates Aviflu stickers, printed resources, a specially labelled dye and a class list. As a starter, the idea is to use the computer virus, bird virus comparison activity. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and you're going to put that up on the, on the whiteboard. Look at the board, look at the information, read the sheet on your desk, fill in similarities and differences. You have five minutes. Off you go. Alex, what have you got? Um, you email someone, you get it. Yeah, I know, but bird flea can spread the The starter activity is a simple picture of a computer with a, an ugly face and a virus bug type thing. And it's just to get their brains going and thinking in terms of what are viruses, what do they do, how do they infect. I want one or two of the similarities and differences. Both of the viruses can be passed on, like in computers, through email and in human and living organisms. The computer virus can only like cost you money, whereas the flu virus can cost you like, your life. When we go on to the main activity, how are we going to generate the questions for the pupils to investigate in the main activity? The question really they need to think about is what, what do they know about viruses? What do they need to know? I, I need you to think about what sort of things could we investigate about viruses. And remember, we were thinking about bird flu last week, so H5N1 is going to be one of the ideas. Anybody? Whether it's deadly or not. Can we get a, vi um, a vaccination that's going to cover all of them rather than we have to get a new one every year? The symptoms of the um, virus. How do you know yeah. you've got it? Yeah so that we've got five different questions being answered this morning. We're going to give you some resources, and I want you to produce for me this morning a, a front page of a newspaper. The aim of the activity is to learn more about avian flu and to use the resources to produce posters. It's a good idea to generate the questions on which the pupils will focus and ask the different groups to look at different questions. Not only are the pupils investigating their group's question, they are also generating a piece of work which will be part of a permanent display. I've learned that uh, birds can catch AV flu through the air and also through each other's faeces. Yeah, our question was about why some people die and why some people don't die and what sort of people are affected. And the reason is because different people's immune systems are different ones. People are better, more elderly people die because their immune systems are not as good. I could catch it by eating chicken that's not cooked properly, also inhale it in the air as well. But whilst the class are getting to grips with avian flu, they are also unwittingly exposing themselves to the invisible dye. But I would like a few people just to come up to the front and tell us what they've found out. Um, our question was whether the virus was deadly or not, and um, we did a poster on all about it, and we found out that 
it can be deadly if your immune system doesn't act fast to it, but then if it does, then your body will immune you from it. OK, our question was how bird flu can be passed on, and we found out that it can be passed on through wild animals, especially birds, undercooked meats and dairy products, and contact with infected birds or people. Our question was who it will affect and why some people will die. We learnt that the most likely people to die at the moment is that is the people who work with chickens and birds who are affected by it. But as it spreads, uh, most people can get affected. Once they have finished their presentations, it's time for Diane to spring the trap. Whilst you've been working this morning, We've been sneaky and we've been playing a game on you. I'm uh, the World Health Manager for this area and I actually have my team of spies in your midst here alongside me, uh, Sharni, Sophie and Lauren. And what we know and what we've known for some time is that Mrs Wilson is in fact a carrier of aviflu. Have I still got it? You certainly have. You certainly are still a carrier, Mrs Wilson. First of all, we need to label up infected people that we find. We do need to see whether she is actually going to live or die. And my assistant here is going to roll the dice <laughs> to see whether she, in fact, lives or dies. Right, then, off you go. Oops! Oh. Mrs Wilson is a victim of the virus. It's theatre. It's a role play. Make sure that there is a degree of theatre about the way you're carrying out the activity. Stay in role, make it exciting. Having established that a person's infected, their fate is decided with a roll of the die. There is a one in three chance of survival. We will find how many of you have been infected by the virus and we'll also find how many of you have lived or died. Um, the, we were the assistants, so we were in on what was going on before everyone else, so we knew what was going on. And it was quite funny to see everyone handling the sheets and just going, oh, they're really sticky, but not knowing what was actually on them. So when we started the game, everyone was like, oh, that's what it was for and stuff. So it was really good. Yep, there's evidence of some infection there. Could infected sticker, please? And can we roll the dice? <coughs> oh, I'm afraid this one's died as well, so... Oh, look at that. Could we roll the dice here with an infected sticker? And this one has died as well. Look at that. The children are enthusiastic about the activity and surprised how contaminated they are. Even more so when Diane reveals just how far the dye has travelled. Right, well, let's see if you've got infection anywhere else other than your hands, shall we? And your face? Oh, look! Turn your head sideways. Quite a lot of infection there. And what about this one? Oh, yes. I think the really clever thing about Aviflu game is that it teaches them how a real virus would spread and they understand that everything they touch and their face really is part of the transfer system. How many weren't infected, how many survived and how many died? Okay, so only one wasn't infected we were in the whole we were, Yeah, we were all going up there, aren't we? It's very important that this particular outcome generate some data which can be collected by the World Health Control Team, the pupils that you briefed beforehand. So then we can do some data processing skills and we can produce some, some charts of how many people in the class were infected, um, which shows how far the virus spread in just the lesson time, yeah. how many of those people who were infected actually died and yeah. how many survived. And we can produce um, some nice data, some nice bar charts from there and to, yeah. give, uh, to give the students some idea of, of how quickly the virus actually yes. does propagate through a population. The team from World Health Control is now in a position to present their report to tell you 
how badly this particular class has been affected by aviflu in the last hour. And I'll hand over to my assistant to actually give the report. Um, in the whole class, only one person um, wasn't infected, and that was Danielle. Um, and when the people were infected, only seven of us survived, and the other 23 died. Well, Mrs Wilson, on behalf of the World Health Organisation, I have to report that you have carried the disease into this classroom, and as a result, in the last hour, 75% of this class have been killed by the disease. Including me. Including yourself. Sad. <laughs> My favourite bit was doing the game because it was really interesting to find out um, who, how you can get the vi virus and who, how many people ha could um, survive and how many people died from it. I enjoyed the part with the where we caught bird flu through the dye and the ultraviolet lights. That was fun. That was quite fun. It was um, getting everybody involved in seeing how people can be affected and how many people will survive or be immune to it. <coughs> I was um, a victim. I died, unfortunately. Definitely infected. I was um, contaminated <laughs> and um, I died. I was contaminated as well and I died as well. Yeah, and there was only one person that um, did, wasn't infected in the whole class. And that's fairly clear, isn't it? Fairly clear infected. I mainly enjoyed, well, the game. Unfortunately, I was a victim of dying, so... But, yeah, it was fun. Who's died? Right, this one. I'd like to try it again with a, with a different class. Really, it, it is quite easy to set it up, and it's easy to do it again with another group, and the rewards really are amazing. The activity seen here is based on one lesson. But aviflu can be extended to last a week and spread throughout the whole school. Although the wider activity can only be carried out every few years. The bird flu activity can be broadened out through the, throughout the whole school. And a couple of years ago, we did infect the whole school with the SARS virus. Really, we, we did quite well. We had most of the school infected and we killed off 25% of the population. It's important that the children know that aviflu is not a real virus and the activity is a simulation. Make sure the game actually replicates real science. It's a piece of theatre and it's important to use the element of surprise. Laminating the resources prevents the dye sinking in and enhances transmission of aviflu. If you generate data, this can then be used in the follow-up lesson to reinforce the learning. It's worth enrolling a lab technician or teaching assistant as the health official to enhance the game. As with all lab activities, it's important that the pupils wash their hands at the end. That way, the one thing they won't take with them when they leave the classroom is aviflu.